Hi, this is Luann Bear. Uh, we'll be starting at 10 a.m. Just letting everybody know that we're getting everything ready. So talk to you soon. Luann, you're muted. Can you go ahead and repeat that for us, please? Hi, I'm Luann Bear, and I'm the Royalty Coordinator. Introducing today, Jaden Randall, our Junior Miss with Skogie Creek Nation. And this will be our last Fiction Friday, and she will be reading a book and her platform was literacy. So we've been doing this to you know, get everybody involved and get into reading. And hopefully we'll have some better news coming up soon. And we're trying to get a book nook going on for our nation and getting things going. Jaden, you can go ahead and get started. It's Jay Stongo, Jaden Randall, Chaho Jifkaros, Glimpo Mahagachugo Doez, Balan Kolobokagan, Omojogaros, Chachogi, Dr. Monty, Maman Lauren Randall, Chaposogi, Coco Lo, Maman Richard Anderson. Mado. Hello, everyone. My name is Jaden Randall. I am the Junior Miss Muscogee Creek Nation for 2019 to 2021. I am 17 years old and I am a senior at Glenville High School. My parents are Dr. Monty and Lauren Randall, and my grandparents are Coco Lowe and Richard Anderson. Today, I'm going to be reading A Kiss Goodbye. This is the sequel. Oh, sorry. This is the sequel to. Um, the last book that I read, A Pocket Full of Kisses, it's by the same author, Audrey Penn. Chester Raccoon sat in the corner of his tree hollow and frowned. I'm not moving, he announced stubbornly. I'm staying here. I want to stay in my tree and with my friends and where I've always lived. Mrs. Raccoon patted Chester's worried, furrowed fat forehead. I understand how you feel, she told him in an understanding motherly voice, but I'm afraid we all have to move. But I like it here, whined Chester. It's my home. And Ronnie's. And I know how scared, sorry, he said, but I like it here, whined Chester. It's my home. It's my home too, said Mrs. Raccoon and Ronnie's. And I know how scary it is to move to a new place. But sometimes, like you, like when you started school and changed classes, you had to do things that are scary and hard at first. I know, maybe you could think of moving as an adventure. So here Chester is with Mrs. Raccoon talking to his mom about moving. And there's Ronnie listening to them.
Chester scrunched up his face and grumbled. I don't like adventures. I have an, I had an adventure with, down at the pond and fell in chasing a frog. So there he is when he fell in the pond chasing the frog and now it's on top of his head. I had an adventure up a pine tree and got prickly pine cones in my tail. So here he is again. Now he's got prickly pine cones in his tail. I had an adventure in Red Rock Cave and got smacked by a bat. So here he is. He's getting smacked by these bats right here. Mrs. Raccoon laughed. Well, this will be a different kind of, of adventure. This time we'll all be together. You and me and Ronnie. Chester didn't budge. He just sat there with his arms folded and a stubborn expression on his face. Why do we have to leave our tree anyway? He wanted to know. I like this tree. I'm used to it. There they are. They're still talking about moving. A line has been drawn around the trunk, explained Mrs. Raccoon. Soon the tree cutters will come and cut it down for wood. Chester poked his head out of the hollow and looked around. There are a lot of other trees, he pointed out. Why don't they cut down some of the other trees instead? They're cutting down all the trees in this part of the woods, explained his mother. But I picked out a new tree to live in that's big and comfortable and has lots of holes to look out of. So here you can see all of the red lines that they put on the trees to cut them down. And here's Chester looking out and seeing all of the red lines. Esther sat back down and looked thoughtful. What if I don't leave? What if I just sit here and never leave this tree? Again, as long as I live, will they still cut it down? I'm afraid they would, said Miss Chester. I mean, Miss Raccoon. But you know, moving isn't so bad. I've moved lots of times. It's hard at first, but you make new friends and fix up your own tree just the way you like it. Besides, don't you think you'll get a little lonely if you stay here? The deers are moving and the squirrels and so are the skunks and foxes. Don't you want to stay with your family? So here it's kind of dark but you can see all the animals. So there are the stunts and the deer right here and the birds. Will I have to go to a new school? asked Chester. I suppose you will but you never know who you might meet. Don't you want to make new friends? I like the friends I already have. I don't need to make new ones. I see. Well, I would certainly miss you if you stayed here, said Mrs. Raccoon. Aren't you afraid you'd miss us? I'd miss you, admitted Chester. I'm not so sure about Ronnie. Mrs. Raccoon chuckled. I think you'd miss Ronnie most of all. Who would be there to pull your hair or tickle your mask or follow you everywhere that you went? So there they are, talking again about moving, and there's Ronnie. Chester sat back and took a good long look around the inside of his hollow. He, mes he memorized its round shape with its outlook hole, or its, out, its look out hole, just below the thick branches that house bird nests and squirrels. Then he closed his eyes, pressed his palms to the wall, and felt the texture of the wood and bark, the smooth places and the rough places. When he opened his eyes, he reached up and broke off a small piece of bark from the wall and pushed it deep into his pocket. So there he is. He's putting his hands on the walls. He put his face up close to the wall and breathed in the sweet scent of white oak. Next, he gazed out the hollow. He wanted to always remember how it had looked, the way the stars and the moon shone between the branches and the way the afternoon and the afternoon sun hit the leaves, turning a fiery red in the fall. When he ducked his head back into the tree, he placed a gentle kiss on his palm and pushed it against the wall. Goodbye, he told the hollow, I'll miss you. So there he is after he put, after he kissed his hand and put his hand on the wall.
When Chester climbed outside, he wrapped his little arms around the tree trunk and said goodbye again. This time, a tiny tear rolled down his cheek. Mrs. Raccoon led Chester and Ronnie down the path that the other animals had taken to the far end of the distant woods, where they would soon be living. You know, Mrs. Raccoon told Chester, you don't ever have to forget your tree. You can keep it in your head and heart forever, just like it is today. So there he is. He's sad now. He's crying. You can see his little tear right there. And there they are. Now Mrs. Raccoon is leading them both out into where they now will be living. Esther stayed quiet all the way to the far end of the distant woods. When he arrived at his new tree in the morning, he folded his arms and pouted. Mrs. Raccoon snuzzled him on the ear. Why don't we all go inside and see how we like it? Chester followed his mother and brother into the tree hollow and looked around. He reached into his pocket and fingered the small piece of bark he had brought with him. He felt good having a piece of his old home. What do you think? asked Mrs. Raccoon. It's okay, said Chester. So there they are now in their new home. Ronnie looked up at his big brother and saw that he was sad and climbed onto his lap. Reaching up, he pulled Chester's whiskers and tickled him under his arm. Chester couldn't help but giggle. I miss my tree, he told Ronnie. I do too, came a sweet voice from outside. So there they are now. Ronnie's trying to make his big brother feel better. Chester's ears perked up and he popped his head out of the hollow. There standing at the foot of the tree was a young raccoon just about his age. Hi, I'm Cassie, said the young raccoon. Who are you? So there's Chester looking out and there's Cassie. Chester ducked back down into the hollow and brushed back his ruffled black mask. When he popped his head back out, Cassie was still there. I'm Chester, he said shyly. Do you live here? I do now, said Cassie. So there they are, still talking. There's Cassie and there's Chester. Chester left Ronnie with his mother, climbed out of the tree, and stood behind the pretty stood beside the pretty raccoon. His pink cheeks, his tiny pink cheeks plumped up into a wide smile. So there they are now. There is Cassie and there is Chester. Mrs. Raccoon peeked out of the tree and grinned. Placing a kiss in her palm, she showed it to Chester and told him to go play. Chester kissed the center of his palm and turned it toward his mother. All right, he told her, I'll stay. So there is Mrs. Raccoon sending, she placed a kiss on her palm and is sending its way to Chester. And there he is doing it back. The end. Well, thank you, Aiden. We really enjoyed that. I'm glad you did the same, Arthur. We got to uh, you know, go on through that story. And uh, just to let everybody know that Jaden, our junior miss, her platform was literally, so she has been working on that, getting things done. A um, couple of announcements coming up. Um, our pageant has been scheduled for June the 4th. It's on a Friday at 7 p.m. Now, it is closed to the public due to COVID, but we will be streaming it live on YouTube, and we'll get that information out. So just keep an eye on our Facebook, and we'll have all the information out so everybody can watch it live that night. And uh, we'll be bringing in the new royalty and Jade will be saying her farewell and that she'll always be close to us and be around. We keep a lot of our royalty around to help us at all times. Um, also, what we have coming up, we're having a t-shirt giveaway and that is going to be on Tuesday, the 20th of this month 
And what we do is we have some, uh, last year, since we didn't have pageant, we had our t-shirts that we never got to sell or give away. And we have volunteer shirts. We're going to give those away. Uh, Jaden belongs to our youth service group. And they'll also have t-shirts for us that we'll be giving away. And that's going to be Tuesday from 11 to 1. It's going to be on our Facebook post also. Keep an eye on it. And to get a shirt, um, you give a donation. And the donation is going to a children's home in Muskogee. And what we they're asking for a laundry detergent. Um, was it um, baskets, laundry baskets, trash bags, paper towels? But that's all listed on our Facebook page. Keep on it. You come by during 11 to 1, drop it off. Uh, we'll give you one of the free shirts of your choice. And Jaden will be there then helping us with that. She has a lot of upcoming events coming up. We'll be doing a parade in bags in April. Um, or was it May? No, it's April. Anyway, we'll have it listed on there also. But we have a lot of things going on. So everybody just keep an eye on our Facebook and stay tuned. And uh, let's help Jaden out to end her reign these next couple of months and get things done and bring in our new royalty in May and June. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, Jaden, anything you want to say? You got graduation coming up. Anything you want to say? Uh, just Mado for tuning in today for this story. Okay, thank you very much and enjoy everybody that watched and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.